Beside the Sea of Galilee, the Lord saw two brothers, Peter and Andrew, and he said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is the Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did, for their voice has gone forth for, to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The decree of the Lord are the true, and all of them just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, 
enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee and saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise so what do we say about this apostle today, Andrew? Well, Andrew is mentioned a lot in Scripture. We know his beginnings. We know some details about the middle of his journey with our Lord. And we know a lot about his end of his life, not from Scripture, but from tradition. So we know we hear in the Gospel today, Andrew was a fisherman. But he wasn't just a fisherman. That can't define a person by their job. Andrew was a person who had a deep faith. He was looking forward to the coming of the Christ. We know that he and Peter were from a very devout Jewish family and they lived their Jewish life very well. When John the Baptist appeared preaching six months before Jesus began his public ministry, John was out there wearing his camel's skin and his leather belt around his waist and living in the desert fasting and standing there in the River Jordan inviting all to conversion and calling them to prepare for the way of the Lord. And Andrew heard and responded. Andrew was kind of doing part-time as a fisherman and part-time as one of John's disciples. Andrew immediately, when he heard the words of the Baptist, went to those waters and was baptized in the Jordan by John in preparation for the coming of Christ when he would receive the true baptism. But it was a baptism of preparation, of repentance. And so John was doing a lot of time hanging out with John the Baptist and assisting John the Baptist. How do we know this? From St. John the Beloved's Gospel. Because John tells us that when Jesus came to be baptized, we know the Holy Spirit came down upon our Lord and John said, he you must follow now. He must increase, I must decrease. And then he turned to do his disciples, one of them being Andrew, and said, he you must follow now. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold he who takes away the sins of the world. And what did Andrew do? He obeyed John. In John's gospel, we have Andrew and the other disciple running after our Lord. They catch up to Jesus. And they, he says, the Lord kind of asks them what, you, what they're looking for. And Andrew says, uh, where do you stay? <laughs> it kind of, it kind of like, it's kind of an odd question to ask him. You think it might be a, a bit of a nervous question. 
Where do you stay? And the Lord says, come and see. I love that because John, Andrew runs after Jesus. He goes to follow him. And the Lord invites him to come and stay with him. And Andrew stays with him. And it must have been such a powerful experience for Andrew because after that, he ran and got his brother Peter. You know, this is a very big trait about Andrew. When Andrew, uh, he loves to introduce people to Jesus. And the first person he introduces to Jesus is his brother Peter, or Simon Peter. And so Andrew immediately gets him and says, we have found the Messiah, the Christ. We found the Messiah. How beautiful that Andrew had been looking for the Messiah, waiting for the Messiah, with John, listening to those words of John, who was prophesying that the Messiah was on his way. And when John pointed out the Messiah, Andrew went after him and asked to stay with him and stayed with him and then decided that everyone else should share in this joy. He believed in Christ. Whatever happened in that conversation between Jesus and Andrew, it greatly touched Andrew. And Andrew believed that he was the Messiah. Now, Jesus had not yet worked any miracles. He hasn't driven out any spirits yet, hasn't walked on water yet, hasn't multiplied bread and fish yet. He hasn't done, hey, even the wedding feast of the Cana hasn't happened yet. Didn't even turn water to wine yet. And here is Andrew coming to Jesus and believing in him as the Messiah on the word of John and his own experience of Christ. And he so beautifully brings his brother to Jesus. And then Peter himself hears the words with Andrew, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. And from that point on, they leave everything and they follow him. They stay with our Lord. And we see as time goes on, Peter and Andrew are there with their, their friends, James and John, their business partners and the apostles gather. And as the three years go by, we find Andrew sometimes in that intimate circle with Jesus. And then at the end of his life, at the end of our Lord's time, the Greeks come to Philip. And Philip brings them to Andrew, and Andrew introduces them to Jesus. So Andrew becomes like our Lord's secretary, right? He's, he's the guy introduced. You have to bring people to Andrew, and then Andrew gets you to Jesus. He becomes like the guy in the, in the part where he's the doorkeeper, you know? And, um, but Andrew is always seeking to introduce people to Jesus. Now, like the rest, Andrew suffers the doubt of Good Friday, and like the rest, he flees in the Garden of Olives, and like the rest, he hides on Good Friday, and like the rest, he's afraid on Holy Saturday, and like the rest, he's in awe and shock when the Lord shows up on Easter Sunday bearing his wounds. But Andrew is also there at Pentecost, and he receives that full portion of the Spirit, and Andrew now goes forth. He was called in to be close to Christ. He experienced Christ. He brought others into Christ. And then he went forth to proclaim the truth of the gospel. His love for Christ incre increased the more he preached. And he went forth to bring many people to Christ. He goes to what is now, uh, well, Constantinople back then. And now it's... Uh, uh, what do they call that city now? <laughs> it was in Turkey there. He, he preached the gospel to Greece in Constantinople. And he made many, many, many converts there, preaching the gospel, introducing them to Christ, bringing them to the waters of baptism, and became the bishop of Constantinople, establishing the church in Greece. Now, eventually, again, Christianity was not welcomed at first, and Andrew refused to stop uh, preaching the gospel. And so they decided, since you're preaching this crucified Christ, you're going to be crucified. And they built a cross, not in the shape of a T, but in the shape of an X. And so it was designed in such a way that you'd be crucified with your legs extended out and your arms extended out as such. So it's form of the X, which is why sometimes you see St. Andrew holding a big X cross because the Greeks decided that'd be the best way to crucify him who preaches the crucified Christ. And you would think that Andrew would have fear in the face of death, that Andrew would have some sort of trepidation in facing the cross. But this prayer has been handed down to us over the past 2,000 years. 
The prayer that was said by Andrew when he saw the cross in the distance. When Andrew saw his cross in the distance, he cried out, and this is so beautiful, O good cross, O good cross, made beautiful by the body of the Lord, long have I desired you, ardently have I loved you, unceasingly have I sought you out, and now you are ready for my eager soul. Receive me from among men and restore me to my master, so that he who by means of you in dying redeem me may receive me. Amen. How beautiful. He had no fear. He realized the beauty and the power of the cross and he longed for that moment that he could give his life for Christ. When he says here, long have I desired you. He desired to give his life for Christ. Ardently have I loved you. He loved the cross because the cross was the means of his salvation. Unceasingly I sought you out. He, he had no problem accepting sufferings in life because he knew that he could offer his sufferings in union with Christ and draw down grace upon the world. He says, now you're ready to receive my eager soul. He was eager. And then he says, receive me from among men. Receive me from among men and restore me to my master. He knew he was going home to heaven. He was going home to Christ. He was now going to die on that cross and behold Christ Jesus once again, face to face. My master, who by means of you in dying redeemed me, may receive me. He saw the cross as the pathway home to heaven. If you ever get a chance to look up that prayer of Andrew and to read it and pray with it, it's such a beautiful prayer. When Andrew saw that cross in the distance, he rejoiced and welcomed it with open arms, realizing that that was his path home to his master, whom he so loved and served so well. Today, as we reflect upon this wonderful apostle, may the Lord grant us the grace necessary to follow Christ in all things and to introduce others to Jesus, to, like Andrew, bring them to the Lord, being able to say to him, I have found the Messiah. I have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ our Lord. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Your 
Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings, which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought and be given life by what you have accepted through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
a similar way when supper was ended. He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Andrew told his brothers, Simon, we have found the Messiah, the Christ, and brought him to Jesus. Let us pray. May communion in your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, set by the example of blessed Apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ, may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Truly have a blessed day. We had a beautiful weekend with wonderful attendance at Mass. We had a baptism yesterday of twins, Colin and Fiona. It was beautiful. Uh, they're 17 months old and they were just hysterical. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. A little impromptu class with the high school kids yesterday on the, on the Trinity. So that was an unexpected afternoon. <laughs> but it was very, very profitable, very good. So, um, but thank you all so much for such a beautiful day and uh, being here this morning as we now have our march towards Christmas and on uh, these, these days of Advent as we uh, wait for the Lord to come. We also remember the day that he came to us in Bethlehem. So let's make it a truly beautiful, beautiful Advent. Have a blessed day and enjoy what might be some sunshine out there. Maybe not. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.